Welcome to the International Broadcast Ministry of No Limits. I am Pastor Delman Coates, and here at No Limits, we want to help strengthen you, encourage you, and empower you to feel God's love and to live your life without limitation. Today's message is about to begin, and I want to thank you for watching and know that I'm praying for you to hear a special word from God as you watch. I want to invite you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3, and I want to read in your hearing verses 16 through 21. Right there, the writer Paul uh, writes the following words. It says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being by power. Let the church say power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power. Somebody say power. Come on, say it one more time. <clears throat> I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all of the saints what is the fullness of God. Now unto him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all that we could ask or imagine to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. For now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that's working on the inside of us. I want to preach today, church, from the thought, I got the power. Come on, type in the comment section or look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I got the power. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise today. I got the power. Like most of you, I enjoy the conveniences that come with owning electronic devices. Inside my home, I have devices that are designed in one way or another to make my life easier, to make performing certain tasks more efficient, and even to make my life better. <clears throat> in my kitchen, there is a juicer, a blender, and a microwave oven, and even a toaster. In the family room, there is a flat screen television, a PlayStation for the kids, and a sound system for listening to music. And in just about every room of the house, there is some gadget or gizmo to enhance the quality of our lives. But here's the thing, with all of these devices, with all that they are intended to do to make life better, with all of their capabilities and the abilities that they have, none of that potential becomes actual until the devices are plugged in. I know that is a simple observation, but it's very salient. Because the manufacturers who designed the devices engineered them in such a way that in order for them to function properly, a cord containing an electrical wire and circuit must be plugged into a wall socket so that the electricity can flow. And without that electricity, without a connection to power, none of the great features matter. Without a connection to power, the potential of the devices lay dormant and the devices are are merely good ideas without purpose, without function, and without a reason for being. None of the benefits can be experienced and, and none of it comes to life until they are connected to the power. In a real sense, the writer of our text is trying to convey the same thing about, about that when it comes to Christian life and living that we can be endowed with a range of possibilities. We, we can be made by our maker for a host of capabilities, but for that potentiality to become actuality, we must be plugged into God's power. Amen. He tells them in verse 16 that he prays that God might strengthen them with power through his spirit in their inner being and that Christ might dwell in their hearts. The sense was that these new believers in the faith had had knowledge of God, but lacked an understanding of God's power. And there's nothing worse for a child of God 
to know about God but not have the power of God. Are you listening? There is nothing worse for a Christian believer to know about God's power but not have uh, but not actualize and tap into the power of God in their lives. Their ability to fulfill their purpose and to walk in victory depended upon them harnessing the power of God for their lives. And so Paul prays for them to be strengthened by God's power without which they were powerless to do what God wanted them to do. And a believer who doesn't tap into God's power is like a car with no gas. It might look good, but it's not going anywhere. God's power is key and critical. God's power is necessary to the functioning and the success of every child of God. In fact, when Jesus was brought back to life, he came back, the Bible says, with all power in his hands. We are nothing without God's power. We can do nothing without God's power. We are nothing without God's power. According to the text, there is an enablement. There is an ability. There is a strength that you and I have been given. And the point of Paul's prayer was that the church would come into an awareness of the power that had already been given them. A power that was working on the inside of them. In fact, Verse 16 says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory that he might grant you the ability to be strengthened within yourself with power. It almost sounds like an oxymoron to be strengthened with strength, to be empowered with power. But the Greek word strengthened better translates to be made aware of one's strength. What Paul was praying for was that they would become stronger in their awareness of the power that they already had. This was not a power that they had to go obtain. This was not something they had to go get. They already had the power. They just were not using it. it was, it's sort of like having a gym membership but never going to work out. What's the point? The word power in the Greek is the Greek word dunamis. Can the church say dunamis? Yeah, dunamis is where we get the English word dynamite. It refers to an inherent power, a power to move stuff, uh, uh, the power to shift stuff, uh, the power to change some things, and uh, the power to transform some things. Paul says, I pray that you would grow stronger and stronger in your understanding of the power that you already have. And he closes in verse 20 by saying that God's power is at work on the inside of us. D -d Did you hear that? There is an energizing, mobilizing, transforming power that is at work inside of every child of God. He wants them then and us now to know that the same power that was at work in Jesus in the past is the same power that is moving and working and transforming and transfixing and operating in the believer right now. That the same power that lifted Jesus from the dead is the same power that lifts us each and every day. And isn't it good to know that we have, have a power on the inside of us that is moving and operating and working on the inside. And we can be assured that we possess that power when we are clear of the source of our power. I need you to listen. It is clear according to this text that the source of our power comes, get this, from our relationship to and our relationship with a particular person. Right. Hear these words from the text. I'm in verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able. I need y'all to get, y'all missed that. Now unto him who is able. Doctrinally, we must understand that our power as Christians derives from being plugged into an actual person. Now unto him. 
Now, I don't want to disparage any other faith traditions, uh, but we've got to understand that we affirm uh, that God is not an object. God is not a statue. God is more than a transcendent reality. God is bigger than a set of ethical postulates and philosophical syllogisms. God, for us, was manifest in an actual living, moving, historical person. It is why we sing in that great hymn and doxology of the church, God in three persons, blessed trinity. Paul doesn't want this congregation to ever forget that the power is in the person of Jesus Christ and that the power we have is in relationship to that person. We have been given power church we we've been we've had power bestowed upon us we have uh, within us uh, power it, it, it's the power of a person uh, the power in a person and the power that derives uh, from a person that Paul wants us to understand All right. okay. I remember I remember some time ago I was in LA and I was being invited I was invited to this exclusive lounge and restaurant in town and as I was there, someone saw me in this exclusive private restaurant and lounge, and they were surprised that I was actually in there. They, they wondered, uh, how could I, a preacher, a person of color, have gotten into this private exclusive club and restaurant? They, they, they wanted to know, how could I have paid the price to get into the restaurant and lounge. And when, and when they wondered how I got in, I told them that I was there, not because of my own credentials, but that I was there because I had a relationship with someone who was already a member. Y'all missed that. In other words, I gained access not because of anything that I had done or because of who I was. I got in because I had a relationship with the right person. I'm trying to help you because the basis for any power that you and I have is our relationship to the right person, Jesus Christ. Are y'all listening? These people knew something about religious power in Ephesus. They understood that Caesar, that the emperor could open certain doors. They knew full well the influence that came from being connected to the Roman Empire. And Paul wanted them to know that the power that these Christians had within them was greater than the power that was around them. The power they had on the inside was greater than the power that was resident in the world. He wanted them to understand that in Christ, they had access to a power that allowed them to do things, to go places, and to be things that, not, that he wanted them to understand that they could do all things through the power they had on the inside of them. And there are some people who draw their sense of power from their job title, their position in society, or the amount of money in their pocket. But Paul proclaims that our power is within us. Somebody say I got the power come on say it again I got the power and the power is within us Jesus proclaims to his followers after his ascension that they would receive power once the Holy Spirit come, came upon them and that they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, in order for them and us to be effective in our lives, in order for them and us to be effective in our walk with God, we must be animated by the same power that animated Jesus Christ. We should live our lives in such a way that we recognize that God is the source of everything that we do. Have I got a witness the same way that we are lost and helpless and without sight when the power goes out in our homes in a storm, so too are we lost and directionless when the power goes out in our lives. And if you want to be a good dad, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife, a good son, a good daughter, a good believer, you got to tap into the power of God. Have we got to witness our lives like meaning uh, get up and go, gets up and leave when we don't tap into the power. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And what is absolutely amazing, church, 
is the unlimited scope or the unlimited nature of the power that God has given us. Somebody say it's unlimited. The apostle says that the power that God possesses exceeds abundantly. In fact, it is exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask, think of, or imagine. If you could put a measuring tape on abundantly or could weigh abundantly or if you could estimate abundantly in a quantifiable way, Paul is saying, uh, then once you have done all of that, our God exceeds uh, and goes beyond uh, all of that. Now, young Mr. Shout, the point here is uh, that God's power far exceeds our capacity to comprehend, to conceive, uh, or even imagine. Uh, in other words, when the doctor says it can't be done, when the lawyer says it's over, when the banker says there's no way you can qualify, God says, I got a capacity that is greater than the capacity on that here. In other words, if you can think of it or you can imagine it, our God has the grand aptitude to exceed all of our collective thoughts about whatever we think we might need. Are y'all listening? Somebody say, God can do exceeding abundantly above. Paul wants them to know how vast and extensive the power of God is. That God's power has no limitations. That God's power has no boundaries. I need you to listen here. Because someone is facing a health circumstance. And someone else is facing a, a financial dilemma. And someone else is facing an issue in your family. And God sent me on assignment to tell you that God's power has no limitation. That God's power has no bound. God can fix it. God can transform it. God can work it around. And I'm talking to somebody listening to me right now. Because you've had your back up against the wall. You didn't know what you would do. You didn't know where you would turn, but some way, somehow, have I got a witness? God, he moved a mountain. God opened up a door. God made a way. Is there anybody listening who can thank God that he moved and shifted in a way that literally blew your mind? Paul wants them to understand that when it comes to God, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep him from getting to you, child of God. Paul says that he prays that we would know the height and the depth of his power. And Paul paints a picture, a beautiful picture of God's strength, of, of God's working in our lives. He says that God's power is not bound by a particular geographical location. You can never go so far where the hand of God cannot reach you. He says God's power is not bound by geography, nor is he limited by any philosophical understanding. Uh, that the same power that operates in high places is the same power that operates in low places. God's power touches those who are strong in the same way he'll touch those who are weak. He'll touch those with a title and touch those without a title. He says God's power is within us. And here's what made me shout. It's in all of us. Ooh. I'm going to say more about that a little later, but I got to park here for a moment. The power of God is in all of us. Not just some of us, but all of us. Not just those with a clergy collar on, but all of us. Not just in those with reverend in front of their name. Not just men. Not just the rich, but all of us. Not the same power that healed the centurion servant is the same power that healed the woman with an issue of blood. The same power that blessed Jairus is the same power that healed the blind man by the side 
side of that road. In fact, the power of God is so vast, so boundless, that not even death can conquer God's power. Oh, I feel like preaching. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh death, is your victory? And where, oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord. Glory to God. God's power is a power that'll swallow up the very thing that tries to swallow you up. Have I got a witness? But in order to access the power, you got to be connected to the source. Y'all listening? Uh, Jesus said in John 15, I am the vine and ye are the branches. But he that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. In other words, if you want the fruit, you got to stay connected to the root. Tell your neighbor, stay connected. Uh, that's the wrong neighbor. Tell your other neighbor, stay connected. You wondering why you ain't getting the fruit, why you ain't getting the blessings of God? Are you still connected? Uh, just like our cell phones and our laptops can only go so long without being plugged in and recharged, uh, we too lose our strength unless we are plugged into God's power. And the way you get plugged in is when you commit to worshiping God. Some people wondering why they don't have the power uh, because they're fair weather worshipers. Yeah, they only worship God when the weather is going well. If it's raining, they don't want to worship it. If they're struggling, you know, you got to worship God in season and out of season. Uh, that's why the psalmist said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. Uh, if I'm up, I'll praise him. And if I'm down, I'll praise him. Have I got a witness? You get plugged in when you're reading the word of God. I don't know about you. I want to be able to say like Jeremiah that his word was inside of me like fire shut up in my bones. Have I got a witness? You get plugged into the power when you volunteer and serve in ministry. You get plugged into the power when you bring all the tithes and offerings into God's storehouse. You get plugged into the power when you're a witness and share your faith. It's how we plug into the power within us that sustains us because when you don't reconnect with God regularly that's when you run out of your energy that's when you're depleted of your strength eventually you're going to burn out if you don't stay plugged into God's power God in the person of Jesus Christ is the source of the power within us. And Paul says, it's a power that is inexhaustible. It's a power that is uncomprehensible. It is a power that is immeasurable. But lastly, I want to tell you that it is a power that is not only beyond scope, but it's available to all people. Yeah. Somebody say it's available to all people. See, when the text says that it's a power that works within us, the us is referring to Gentiles and Jews who have surrendered their lives to the lordship of Christ. Uh, the point, that point is made in earlier chapters. We've been teaching in Bible study, and I'll say more about that in coming weeks. But this entire letter is written to Jews and Gentiles. And the point here is that the power is available to everybody. It is activated in all who accept them. You don't have to be a legacy member. You don't have to be a big donor. 
Uh, you don't have to give a lot of money. If you need it, you can have it. Lord, if you need the power and we need his power, God's power is a glory to God. If you, if you open up your heart to him, surrender your will to him, uh, and give your hands to him, uh, you have uh, access to the power. See, at the time of our text, there was the belief that God's power was restricted only to certain people. You had to be of a certain background, a certain race, a certain orientation, a, a certain belief, a certain perspective in order to get access to the power. The view was that God's power was confined to those who were morally pure and ethically perfect. You had to dot every moral I. You had to cross every ethical T. And so Paul wanted to be clear that Paul's power is available to everybody. Not just a few, not just some, but all. He can do all and he's available to all. The last point is that he can do all. But now he wants us to understand that he's available to all. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be flawless. You don't have to live your life a certain way. God's power and God's presence are gifts that God makes available to all his children, black and white, red and yellow, men and women, boys and girls. Y'all not listening here. We'll talk next week about what it means to be adopted into the family of God. But for today, I want you to know, child of God, that you have the power. Come on, somebody just tap yourself on the chest and say, I got the power. Uh, no, 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 no. If you're going through anything in your life, if, if the devil's been trying to hound you, uh, if you got more month at the end of your money, I want you to tap yourself on your chest and say, I got the power. Uh, come on, type in the comment section. Uh, type the hearts in the chat room uh, and say, I got the power. Uh, it doesn't matter what mistakes you made. Uh, it doesn't matter what choices you engage in. God's power is available to you. Uh, God's power is available to anyone who avails and makes themselves available to the power. In fact, God's power is already working on the inside of you. Oh, y'all missed your shout. Look, I thank God that I don't have to purchase it. I don't have to borrow it. I don't have to negotiate for it. It's already working on the inside of me. That's why Paul would later tell his young, this young pupil, Timothy, to stir up the gift of God that was already within him. He had to tell Timothy, Timothy, you already got it in you. You just got to stir it up. Oh. Lord have mercy. He, he just had to be willing uh, to stir up and use. Uh, uh, Y'all not here one day, one day, one day a friend of mine, one day a friend of mine told me that he boarded an airplane and that he asked the stewardess for, for a cup of coffee with cream and sugar in it. Yeah, a friend of mine said he got on the, on the plane and was in first class and he said to the flight attendant that he wanted some coffee with cream and sugar in it. A few moments later, Flight attendant came back with a cup of coffee and he looked down into the cup and the cup of coffee was black and he was PO'd. He was a little upset because he felt that the flight attendant had ignored his instructions to bring him some coffee and to put some cream and sugar and he called her over to him and said, Miss, I asked for some cream and sugar in my coffee and here it is. You brought me some black coffee. And she replied to him and said, sir, there is cream and sugar in your cup. My job is to just put the cream and the sugar in the cup. But it's your job, sir, to stir up the cup. Oh, Y'all missed the shout. God sent me here to tell somebody that his job is to put the power inside of you. But your job is to stir it up. Have I got a witness? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to stir up the power that God has within us. It's time to stir up the power that God 
has made available. You got power to get victory over that illness. You got power over your finances. You got power over that addiction. You got power to write that book. You got power to build that business. You got power to finish your degree. God's job is to put it in you, but it's your job to stir it up. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's stir up the gift. Let's stir up the power. When I praise God, I'm stirring up the gift. When I lift up holy hands, I'm stirring up the gift. As a matter of fact, there's a final note worth mentioning. Paul, up to this point, he's been writing prose. But when he gets to verses 19 and 20, there's a shift. And he goes from writing prose to a doxology. Verse 20 is regarded by scholars as a doxology. You know what a doxology is? A doxology is a song of praise. So he's been writing instructions for three chapters. He's been writing prose for three chapters, but something happens when his train of thought, something shifts when he starts thinking about the power that's on the inside. He starts breaking out in a spontaneous shout when he says, and now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask think or imagine he breaks out in a praise break in my sanctified imagination I see him running leaping and dancing in my mind I see him dancing and shouting because he started thinking about the power that God had given him. He's in jail, but he had power. He's behind bars, but he has power. And I stop by to tell somebody that you got the power on the inside. And when you realize you got the power, you want to break out in a praise. You want to break out in a dance. And what I like about the text, we don't get a sense that there's a cheerleader. We don't get the sense that somebody had a push pause to praise him. He didn't have a preacher telling him to put his hands together. He just broke out in a doxology. And I stopped by to tell somebody when you start thinking about the goodness of God and all he's done for you, something on the inside ought to shout glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burdens down, yeah, yeah. Come on, praise him, praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him for his mighty act. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let the trumpet, let the drums praise him. Let the keyboard praise him. Let everything, let the deacons praise him. Let the ushers praise him. Let the members praise him. Let the sound team praise him. Let everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody listening who can thank 
God that with everything you went through last year, with all the hills, with all the valleys, the ups and the downs, a mere fact that you're still here is enough to give God an undignified praise. Yeah! Yeah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Since I laid my burdens down, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burdens down, I'm waiting on you to praise it. I'm waiting on you to thank it. I'm waiting on you to shout. I'm waiting on you to run around your bedroom. Run around your kitchen. Cause the devil tried to take you out last year. The devil tried to stop you. But look at you. You're still here. Still smiling. Still running. Still dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Glory. 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 I got the power, child of God. And every day this year, every week this year, every month this year, I want you to remind yourself that I got power working on the inside. When you're facing life challenges, you get your circle of friends, your family members, your spouse, your children. Y'all join hands and pray like Paul. Say, no, we got power working on the inside of us. We can, we can make it through this obstacle. We can make it through this trial. Because there's power. There's dynamite. There's dynamite. Dunamis power. Dynamite shifts. It moves. It destroys obstacles. You've got dynamite on the inside of you. Glory to God. I got the power. We've got the power. I am so glad that you took the time to watch this message today. If you have been blessed by this outreach, I'd like to ask you to become a partner in this ministry so that together we can reach the world for Jesus Christ. My heart is to reach people just like you all around the world and to tell them that God loves them and wants to empower them to live a life with no limits. Your financial investment in this ministry will enable us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ around the world so that more people can be inspired and encouraged. Will you help me to reach those people? Will you join me in empowering the lost and the forgotten? Will you be my partner as we teach people to truly live a life with no limits? To make a donation safely and securely, go to our website at delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org. And look for the donate button on the top right of the homepage. Thank you in advance for your support and for becoming a true partner in No Limits. Your partnership and financial gift will help us impact the world by bringing hope to those who need it. Your generosity today is a reminder of the goodness of God. Thank you again for watching No Limits with Pastor Delman. I created No Limits to help you strengthen your daily walk with God. And there is no better way to start your day than with the No Limits Daily Devotion email. Each devotion contains a passage from scripture and some insight to inspire you to feel God's love and to live a life with no limits. You can sign up today to start receiving the daily email by going to delmancoats.org. That's delmancoats.org. Thank you in advance for signing up for the daily devotion email and I pray 
that it helps you to live each day with no limits. Hello, I want to thank you for watching the broadcast today and I have an exciting announcement for you. The No Limits free mobile app is now available for both Apple and Android devices. I want to invite you to download the app right now. Simply go to the App Store on your phone and search for No Limits with Pastor Delman to find and download the free app. Or you can go to a special page on our ministry website to find the direct link to download the app. The page is found at delmancoats.org forward slash mobile. And with the No Limits app, you can watch my messages, read daily devotionals, access the entire Bible, and much, much more. And before I go, let me ask you for a favor. If you like what you see on the app, please tell your family and friends about it as we want to connect with more people to help them live a life with no limits. Thank you again for watching the message today and know that I'm praying for you to be strengthened in your walk with the Lord and I ask that you please pray for me each time that you watch. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of No Limits and Mount Enon Baptist Church in Clinton, Maryland.